Hey, Jared Dees, ReligionTeacher.com. I want to share with you today a little bit about the parable of the great feast, also called the parable of the great banquet or dinner. Uh, there's also a version of it in the Gospel of Matthew that's a little bit more detailed. I want to focus on this one from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 14. And in it, we get a little bit of a glimpse for, for what it's like to accept that invitation to the kingdom of God, to the kingdom of heaven. In the parable, there's a master who's throwing a great feast and he sends out his servant to go invite the guests who are supposed to come to the party, supposed to come to the feast, but they say no. And in this story, the master, of course, just like normally in, in these parables of Jesus, is God. And like many of the other parables that talk about a feast, the feast, of course, is heaven or the kingdom of God. And you might even look at this in two ways. You could think of it in terms of the kingdom of God that's already here now on earth as a part of the Christian church, Christian, Christian community, or you can think of the kingdom of God as everlasting life, the, the heaven, if you will. And so the idea here in this parable is that God is sending out his servant, servants possibly, to go out and tell the guests that the party is ready. So the servant goes to the invited guests and each one of the guests in this parable has an excuse. They have a house that they purchased. They have some oxen that they are using to make money and farm or they just got married. These three excuses, which are all valid excuses, show that these invited guests have an attachment that they're unwilling to let go of in order to accept that invitation to the great feast. So they have, they say no because they have some kind of an attachment and excuses. It's not that these are bad people. It's that they are too attached to things other than God to accept that invitation to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And so what does the master tell the servant to do? The servant goes back and he tells the master and then the master sends out the servant once again. And this time he tells them to go to the poor, the lame, the crippled, the blind, who have nothing to lose. Go out to the people who have nothing to lose and ask them to follow me. Ask them to come to my party. Ask them to come to the feast. And of course they accept. And then there's still more room. There's still more room. So what does the master say to the servant? Go out to the roads in the lanes, the highways, in the hedgerows. These, these are the people who are outside of the city. They're um, suspicious. They're outcasts. Um, it may even be referring to, in this case, the Gentiles who weren't Jews, who weren't a part of the community that Jesus was speaking to. Go out to those people who you would not expect to be invited and invite them. Because again, they have nothing to lose. Just like the poor and the crippled. They're going to accept that invitation because they don't feel an attachment to something that's going to hold them back. So what does this story say to us today, to our lives? When we read this parable and we think about Jesus speaking to us, we have to ask ourselves, you know, am I like one of these invited guests? I'm a good person. I'm doing good things. But am I too attached to something here on earth that I'm unable to accept God's call into the kingdom of God? Or when am I one of the poor and crippled? When am I one of the, the people that are the outcasts and the highways, the hedgerows, the lanes and the roads? When am I one of these people that, that is ready to accept that invitation, that has nothing to lose, that needs God's love and healing touch and that invitation to become a part of the kingdom of God, the, the Christian community? You know, when am I those? And then maybe as a second way of thinking about this story, who are the servants in my life? Who are the people that are inviting me into that kingdom? Maybe thinking, thanking them or, or saying a little prayer or thanksgiving for them, their presence in our lives. And the, the, the moral of the story, this, the parable of the story is almost explained in the next passage, in which Jesus describes the cost of discipleship, of, of taking up our cross. He says at the very end of, of the, close to the end of the, this chapter in the Gospel of Luke 14, you know, therefore none of you can become my disciples if you do not give up your possessions. So the question is, what do you need to give up in order to love God back? What do you need to give up in order to become a part of that kingdom of heaven, to join in that great feast that he has ready for you? Go make disciples. God bless.